It's been five months now since COVID arrived. And, you know, at first it was new and weird and scary. And now it's kind of become, you know, life. And while for some it's gotten easier over time and others it's gotten harder, for many of us it's, it's kind of both. But as a whole, for everyone, it's, it's just not easy right now. So today we're doing a little wedding self-care to, you know, help with your emotional well-being. Hi there, I'm Jamie Chang, your destination wedding planning guru and designer of joy at Mango Muse Events, the creator of Passport to Joy, the step-by-step -step online wedding planning course for couples, and the founder of Let's I Do This intimate, micro, hybrid, and virtual weddings in the San Francisco Bay Area and I share real and honest and useful wedding planning tips, tricks, and advice you can use to help make planning your wedding easier and more joyful so you can create a wedding you love. Because let's face it, wedding planning and life right now is it's hard and it can just be downright painful and nobody wants that. So we're bringing the joy back to wedding planning. Are you ready? Okay, so let's do this. Now, I know... <laughs> I know things are hard right now and definitely harder for some than others, obviously, but it's just hard. It's hard mentally. It's hard emotionally. And obviously for some, it's hard physically too. With, with just everything going on in the world, there's a lot to deal with. And then there's all the personal things. And then there's your wedding and all of that is just difficult, difficult to deal with. And you know, it's not just you. I totally feel it too. And everyone I talk to feels it in some shape or form as well. And you know, while I'm not a mental health professional and I'm not a massage therapist and I'm not a, you know, meditation guru, um, I'd like to help you lighten the load, even if it's just a little bit with a little, you know, wedding self-care. So today that's what we're going to be doing because it's important, you know, it's important to focus on wellness and taking care of yourself, perhaps now, maybe more than ever. And, you know, like in those like airline videos, right? You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. And so while your wedding, you know, is just one small piece of your life, it can feel just huge. It can feel immense and intensely emotional. So I'd like to help you find just a little bit of peace in these crazy times. And I know you're dealing with likely a lot and feeling a lot of different things right now. So what I'd like to try to do is just try and relieve those feelings one by one, little by little, as much as I can. Now, these may not all apply to you. You may not be feeling all of these things, but I bet you feel at least one of these things. So let's see what we can do today with a little, you know, wedding, self-care, little exercises here to help free yourself and just lighten the load. All right. So first, you know, let's, let's talk about the sadness because <laughs> there's a lot of sadness right now and it's hard not to just feel just super immensely sad for the loss of your wedding you know this is an event you've spent hours and hours on or months on or years on even years planning and it's something you'd hoped for it's something you imagined and it's something you'd started to you know really get excited about and not just excited for things like how beautiful it would look or what you were going to wear and how great you felt in it or what you had planned but it was about also the excitement over bringing together everyone you love in this one place and let's not forget too that you know you're also excited about married life about embarking on this sort of new journey together and to lose all that is, is, is sad. It's, it's a lot to be sad about. So if you haven't yet, I'd really like you to give yourself the permission to feel sad, you know, to, to feel that emotion because 
you need to mourn. <laughs> and I know it sounds kind of weird, but you really need to mourn the loss of the wedding that you were supposed to have. If you allow yourself to feel that, you know, then you can actually move on. Because if you if you don't, if you know, if you hold that in, then it's it's just always going to be there. It's going to be like this lingering thing, you know, above you. And I think it's also important for you to know that it's okay to be sad. It's okay to feel sad. You know, you might be feeling guilty or even, you know, maybe selfish for being sad about your wedding, but you know, you aren't. Let yourself just feel what you feel. Let yourself feel it. And then you can heal. You know, you can, once again, you can mourn that loss and then be able to, to move on. Okay, so then let's, let's, let's talk about another emotion here, or two really, and that's the frustration and the anxiety. And these two really kind of go hand in hand because, you know, there's frustration over having to postpone or postpone again or postpone a third time because unfortunately, you know, the situation's not getting better. There's frustration over changing plans and having to keep changing plans. There's frustration over putting things out, you know, pushing things out, including your marriage. There's frustration over, you know, having to tell your guests, you know, that yet again, plans have changed or the date has moved. And then there's anxiety. Anxiety over whether, you know, you're picking the right date to postpone to. There's anxiety over, you know, what's the right decision here. There's anxiety over whether, you know, you, you're, you're going to lose money if you make this decision. There's anxiety over, you know, whether your venue or your vendor might go out of business. So, you know, there are really two things that you can do to help make these feelings go away. And there are things you can do right now. So let's dive into these because it will make you feel better. So one, one option here is to postpone to a TBD date. So instead of choosing a date, just don't choose a date at all. You know, leave it open instead and make a decision when you either feel ready or when you have the information you need to make that decision. You know, I know this goes against the grain and is not what every wedding vendor or planner is going to be telling you right now, but really having no date means you don't have to worry about if you're choosing the right date. It means you don't have to worry about postponing again and again and again. It means you don't have to worry about proposals, getting new contracts, making sure everyone is available. It allows you to free yourself a little and just wait, wait for the right time, wait and reassess down the road and make the decision when you feel ready and when you feel confident in that decision. And then, you know, you can just deal with the situation as it is then instead of trying to guess or worry constantly. Now, I know there are people who, you know, having no date would just give them more anxiety. So if, if that's you, then I would say, you know, consider this option number two, okay? And with this one, this route may just be better for you. This route is all about getting married now. Now, you can still totally have your original wedding later, but having your wedding now or getting married now or having a wedding now in some shape or form really helps to take the pressure off. Here's what I mean. You know, choosing a perfect date or the right date or the right time is less crucial and having to postpone is less painful because you can celebrate now and you can get married now. And, you know, having that big party can wait. It feels okay to wait because you're married. You know, you're not waiting to get married. You're just waiting to do the, the big shindig. And the other thing to keep in mind, too, is you can really do both of these things. You can both postpone to a TBD date and get married now. And both will really ease the frustration and the anxiety you feel and the worry you have and just 
help you to move forward. So I would, I would think about it. Think about these two options. See if one or the other or both make sense for you. Okay, then there's the feelings of, you know, fear and worry and fear over the idea that, you know, you could get your parents, get your grandparents, get your siblings, get your nieces and nephews, get your family and your friends sick. And that your wedding could, you know, be the cause of that, of people getting sick. And that's, that's scary. And that fear is, is real. It's not an irrational fear, you know, it really can happen. And it's, it's a true worry. It's something that can keep you up at night or give you nightmares. And, and I will totally admit that I've had those nightmares already. And, you know, because you worry, you worry about the health and the safety of the people that you love, rightfully so. Not to mention, you know, all the people in your community that you don't know and who you come into contact with, you know? And you just, you do not want your wedding to be the cause of any sort of pain and suffering. You just, you just don't. So what we need to do here is help you remove that fear because that fear, it's intense and it's debilitating. And you can really do that by making decisions that help you eliminate the fear. So what do I mean here? I mean, taking steps to plan and ensure that your wedding is safe. And so, you know, we talked about this in a recent video, which you, you should definitely check out. But what I'm talking about here are things like having a virtual wedding or having a virtual component so that you keep people safe or downsizing your wedding. You know, if you can make your wedding safe, then the fear disappears, right? Then you can feel comfortable in what you're planning, how you're moving forward, and the wedding you're, you're, you're having. Whether that's, you know, like I said before, virtual weddings or downsized weddings or an elopement or just postponing. You can feel good about that decision because it's safe and it's keeping people safe and that will help eliminate that fear that you have. All right, then there's the uncomfortable, you know, feeling of judgment. Now, no matter what you've chosen to do or you choose to do, whether that be, you know, to get married now or to wait until it's safe or to have your wedding during COVID or to cancel altogether, you might be experiencing some judgment and or pressure perhaps from family, from friends, from vendors even, who think you should be doing a certain thing or not doing a certain thing or, you know, what have you. And outside of, you know, keeping people safe, there is really no right or wrong answer in this situation. It's just a matter of doing what makes sense for you. So that could be eloping with just the two of you or with just your parents. That could be doing a virtual wedding. That could be downsizing your wedding. That could be canceling, you know, your wedding altogether. It could be waiting until it's 100% safe. Or it could be something, you know, completely different than any of those. Whatever it is, you know, it's, it's okay. I want you to know that it's okay. This is, this is your wedding, okay? Your wedding. And so however you want to get married, however you want to celebrate is what you should do. You know, don't, just don't, don't worry about anyone else. Ignore them, in fact. Don't worry about them. And remember that it's not their wedding. It's not their marriage. It's yours. And so you need to do what feels right for you and then feel good about it, you know, like do, do the thing that makes sense, that feels good and seriously, and then feel good about it. Once again, ignore, just ignore everyone else. Do it. Ignore everyone else and just be happy. Be happy with the decision that you've made. That's the right decision for you. Okay. Now, I hope these tips and words of encouragement and little exercises help you. I really do. And it, it might take time. It, at the end of this video, I would be amazed if it magically solves all your problems, but that'd be fabulous, but it might take some time. Start the process though, and it, it, it will help 
to make you feel better, at least with regards to, once again, our, our little world of weddings. Because, you know, once you move forward, it always feels better. It's like that feeling of being stuck in that emotion, whatever emotion that is, or all of those emotions, right? If you can figure out how to move forward, and hopefully these tips will help, then it, you'll just feel better. You'll just feel so much better. Now, I want to wrap this video up with just one last reminder, one last tip, and that's this. You know, don't forget that you have each other. You know, you found somebody you love who loves you for exactly who you are. And that's amazing and so special. So despite everything else, no matter what's going on, you know, with the world in your life, just remember that. Remember your love. And that alone should help warm your heart and put a smile on your face. And honestly, smiling is a form of self-care, I truly believe. So remember that. And that at the very least should help lighten your spirits, even if it's just a little bit. Okay. I want to wrap up today's video with a fun question. Okay. So here's today's question. What's, you know, one thing you love about your partner, one thing that makes you smile. So let's get the smiling started, right? Let me know in a comment below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please like it. Give us some thumbs up. You can check out our other videos for even more tips and hit subscribe so you get access to all the new ones. And if you're looking for help through the entire wedding planning process, please check out Passport to Joy, my online course. You can find all the links below because you deserve to enjoy your engagement no matter what your budget is and even in the middle of a pandemic. Thanks so much for being here. Take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye.